Hey boys and girls, gonna clear up a little confusion here. Apparently I confused some people last week. They were as confused as a chameleon in a bowl full of Skittles. First I made a video calling the Nikon D7100 the best production uh, Nikon camera. Meaning for the money, where you can get the best bang for your buck. Obviously I love the shit out of it. You saw the other video that I've got three D7100s. Don't ask me why I've got three of them. But anyway. And then I made another video talking about the D700 Nikon, no longer current production, FX camera, saying it is the best Nikon DSLR. And people said, well, you're contradicting yourself. First you said the D700 is the best camera, and you said the, then you said the Nikon D700 is the best Nikon DSLR. Well, let me go into specification. Specificity is divinity, so it is said, at least by the ancient oracles. Nikon D700, be it Canon or Nikon, is the highest rated among third-party reviewers the past 10 years plus Canon or Nikon highest rated DSLR uh, camera out there. No longer in production. Now the real conundrum is now you can buy a factory refurb that I showed you in another video a week ago. A uh, Nikon factory refurb D700, D7100, excuse me for $699 from B-Age or Adorama. Absolutely spotless. It might come with 20 shots on it on a shutter count. It might come with 5,000. Doesn't matter. I mean, even 10,000 is nothing at all. I mean, it's nothing. Um, not a micro scratch on it. Everybody else reports the same. I've not seen a single dissatisfied person with their factory refurb D7100 for $700. Now, I have both of these currently with the vertical grip. Now, the D7100 D7 factory refurb does not come with that $300, well, $240 um, vertical grip slash extra battery compartment. So that's extra. Now, the D700 used minty condition, obviously no warranty at all. Now, the refurb D7100 can be had with 90 day warranty. 90 days is all you need. Obviously, there is that 5% chance something's going to happen out of 90 days. What you need is an inland marine insurance policy or a personal article policy in case you drop it. You need that on any of your gear, regardless of the warranty you've got. None of that warranty is going to cover stupidity like drops, bills, accidents, or theft. Obviously, you need that policy regardless of warranty. D700, you're not going to get with a warranty unless you get a really expensive one that comes from Nikon. And they are expensive, trust me. And all you're doing is paying a lot of money for a warranty. But this can be had for $700 also, just like the D7100 refurb, factory refurb with a 90 day warranty. But I can get for $700, 7 750 I can get it with the vertical grip attached. Both of these have their vertical grips. So the question is which to buy. I made two videos that refer to the D7100 as best production Nikon DSLR. Obviously I have the expensive shit. I just sold off my Nikon uh, F4. My D4, excuse me. I don't have them back in the days of film. I keep still keep thinking of my one true love that I carried around for so many years, my F4S. I just sold off my D4. Okay. I have had a D4S not as my own personal ownership, but I have had it for three months. Not impressed. Amazing, amazing, continuous high speed, uh, amazing low light capabilities. Everybody else agrees on that, but that's a $6,000 camera. But it's also only a 16 megapixel FX camera. And people are like, well, it's an FX camera, it's 16 megapixels. You know, there's a big difference. Well, D7100. Yes, I made a flub in my earlier video. I said it had a Sony sensor. Yes, the, the sensor in the Nikon D7100 is, in fact, of course, a Toshiba sensor. Excuse the hell out of me because I made the video at 3 o'clock in the morning and I made a verbal flub. Anyway, equivalent of 54.1 megapixel pixel density on the APS-C uh, DX sensor in the Nikon D7100, which is amazing. That's great stuff. Both of these are 700 bucks. Let's just forget about the vertical grips for right now, although you can't get the 700, the D700, used with a vertical grip for seven, 750 bucks. So let's forget about the vertical grips, although I can't live without a vertical grip. You may think otherwise, it's personal preference. I grew up with really heavy cameras. Both of these are tanks. Both of these are magnesium chassis. DX left, FX right. 
Now this was my first camera and if I'm upgrading from a dinky and I wanted to make a serious upgrade, as I told you in the prior video, I've not contradicted myself one iota. It's just some of you didn't watch the entire video probably because I drone on and I flapped my lips too damn much. Well, excuse the fuck out of me. All right? Too much caffeine. Caffeine, not drugs, okay? I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Okay, get that? Great. Got it. Good. Okay. D7100 versus D700. If I'm upgrading from my dinky... I got a little 5300 or a little 3000 series, whatever the case may be. Say, I've got whatever budget for my glass. I think I'm going to start calling these, instead of calling these videos the angry photographer, I'm going to start calling these video series the glass whore. No, no, I'm not going to do that. That's too crass. You've only got 700 bucks to spend on your camera. Say, seven, eight, nine hundred bucks. The choice is right here. I have a couple D810s, they're $3,000 cameras, okay? Um, glass is what remains, alright? Your cameras are gonna, you know, they're gonna, something is gonna replace them soon enough. As soon as you bought it, just like a computer, something's gonna replace it. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. I'm still using uh, outgraded Mac Minis. I used to do Apple tech support. I've um, got a lot of uh, high-end Apple stuff. Including MacBook Airs and Pros and Mac Minis. Anyway, that's irrelevant. So, the point being, if I'm upgrading, and it's my first camera from my dinky, I'm switching from Canon or I'm upgrading my dinky, um, the Nikon D700 does not have any video capability. Now, to me, I don't give a shit about that. I have professional three chip camcorders for that. I don't give a fuck about video. A lot of people, a lot of you people out there do. Nikon D7100 takes great video, and a lot of you, that's very important. So if that's the case, obviously go with like the factory refurb D7100 for $700. Uh, they're both magnesium chassis bodies. They're both extremely tough, rugged suckers. The D700 is a lot heavier. It is more rugged, not by much. I mean, neither one of these are meant for clubbing people over the head with, all right? Let's be honest. Obviously, you're going to rip the bayonet mount off the front of the camera. You destroy it quick. But the D700 is a heavy bastard. It is a tank. It is rugged. But this was, in 2008, a $3,000 camera. It has amazing, amazing color saturation and contrast. It still sells like a son of a bitch online because this camera got insane ratings. Canon or Nikon, this camera, this FX DSLR Nikon, got insane ratings and is still insanely beloved. And if you have one and you shoot with it, you will understand why. Now if you like, don't like heavy cameras, it might not be the camera for you because it is one heavy tank. It is one heavy son of a bitch. Doesn't do video. So that's an important consideration, forget about it. Now the question becomes is, if you already have an Icon D600 or 610, I feel sorry for you, but if you, if you have one of those, or a D750, the insanely overpriced D750, or you have an Icon D810, and you know as well as everybody else knows that eventually your shit's gonna break down, something's gonna have to go in for repair, everybody has a backup camera, most people, have several backup cameras. If you're gonna make a choice, say you have an FX camera or even a DX camera, you already have a D7100, you already have a D810 or a D4 or a D4S, and you want to blow somewhere in the region of a thousand bucks and get something that's awesome as a secondary or a beater camera, this is it. No ifs, ands, or buts. Period. End of story. The D7100 excuse me, the D700 is an extreme kick-ass camera. And anybody else out there that bitches, well, it's got a 12.1 megapixel sensor in the back. You know, I know it's FX, and I know it used to be a $3,000. Shut the fuck up. The $6,000 Nikon D4S is only a 16 megapixel camera, okay? The megapixel war is kind of ended. I can blow up a 20 by 30 print from that Nikon D700 that will knock your socks off and pop your balls right off your crotch and roll right into the basement, okay? There is nothing at fault with the D700. Ten years from now, it may be another story. But that, that camera is made for another ten years, if not more. 
it is a tank. That's not to say the Nikon D7100 is also not built like a tank. It's incredible. I got three of them. I've been praising it endlessly. Now what you're looking at on both of these is two $700 cameras. 700 bucks, 700 bucks. The question is you need to make an educated, logical choice. Live long and prosper Spock, right? Logical choice. Poor old Leonard Nimoy, you dead bastard. Um, the logical decision. If you're upgrading from your dinky and video is anything at all important to you, which to me it is not because I've got a professional video recording device, i got a couple of them, then obviously the choice is an Icon D7100. For me, I'm of this old-fashioned idea that I have a DSLR for taking pictures, not for taking video. Well, it's handy, you know, sometimes I like to take a video. Oh my god, okay, great. Fine, get the D7100. What I'm telling you is that the FX D700 over here for 700 bucks with the vertical grip is one tank and one dirty bastard. In the good sense. It's an awesome camera. It is a fucking tank. It is the highest rated DSLR in the past 10 years from third party groups across the board. On average, in total, Canon or Nikon. It is just the cat's ass. When Nikon rolled out the D700, the heavens split open and some sort of angelic force blessed this particular series of camera. I have three D7100s. If that's your upgrade, then I recommend the D7100. I'm making this video because apparently I confused a number of people. They said, well, you made two videos. You said the Nikon D7100 is the best camera. And then you made another video right after it. And then you said the Nikon D700 is the, is the best Nikon DSL. I don't understand. Okay. Best current production for the money. Best Nikon DSLR. Both of those statements come with necessitated caveats. I've already discussed with you what those caveats are. Okay, are the caveats clear? Good. I'm trying to help you make an informed choice. I don't want anybody buying something and regretting it. No video. Built like a tank. Absolutely incredible. Amazing color saturation contrast that basically hasn't been matched since. Not that that can't be taken care of in post and Photoshop, obviously. And stop comparing megapixels, all right? D7100, 24 megapixels, does amazing video, incredible camera. Both of these, 700 bucks. Okay? Now, if it's your uh, secondary camera, your beater camera, as I like to call it, something you're going to take out in the wet and wild, and you already got a nice FX or a nice DX, boom, there's the answer unquestionably. My recommendation, bar none, no caveats, no ifs, ands, or buts, boom, right there. If you're upgrading from your dinky and you care about having video capability and your pixel peeping whore, get the Nikon D7100. And I don't know if you can see it, but the Nikon D700, the reason this is off kilter is because I actually have a monopod base on the bottom of the D7100, so that's why it's sitting cockeyed like that. But the Nikon D700, I don't know if you can tell, is considerably a larger honking beast. And it is a honking heavy sucker versus the D7100, which is good for stability. Some people don't like that. I don't like heavy cameras. Well, I grew up with heavy cameras. They're great for steadying your shot. And uh, I just love heavy fucking cameras. And uh, a lot of the pros my age, 35 and above, they're used to that shit because that's what we grew up on. You know, if you're used to a little two ounce point and shoot, then so be it. I've got nothing against either one of these. Got three of the D7100s. I've had two of the D700s. I've got currently just one D700. Um, they're both incredible choices. If you're upgrading from your dinky, each one, either one you buy, be perfect. If you need video capabilities, obviously get the D7100. Warranty be damned. You're going to have to have insurance on both. So the important thing is making a logical, informed decision. What you need, what you want. Don't be a pixel peeper. I can print out 20 by 30s on either one of these and you'll be perfectly happy. The color saturation on this FX D700, even though it is 12.1 Remember I just got to telling you the $6,000 Nikon D4S is only a 16 megapixel camera. This is a 24.1 megapixel camera. 
Okay, stop being a pixel peeper and counting me. Well, this one has a DXO rating of so-and-so, and it's got, you know, a bazillion more mega. Please, end it with that. All right, please. Um, Capability-wise, forgetting about video capabilities, um, you know, potato to potato, which one has the uh, greater capabilities as far as options, what you could do, video out, yeah, the Nikon D7100 does. It's a current production camera. It is uh, essentially six years newer than the Nikon D700. But the D700, if you take someone that had no idea what Nikon is, and they're a professional photographer, and they've been shooting Pentax their whole life, and they had no idea what Nikon was, and they said, well, you got two major groups, Canon and Nikon, you can only buy a Nikon. You have two choices. I, you can have the camera that used to be $3,000 seven years ago, or you could have a current production camera that is $700 and is made today. Nine times out of ten, the true consummate pro is like, I will take the camera that was $3,000 seven years ago because I can work with it, because I've got mad skills, and I don't need a thousand gadget whore features. And uh, if I want to take some fucking video, I'll whip out my Canon camcorder and I'll take some fucking video. I don't need video on my DSLR, although a lot of you do, and I know why you do, and it's perfectly understandable as my, about making an informed decision. The point being is I'm laying out 700 bucks and 700 bucks here, telling you the difference between the two. I made what seems to a few of you to be a contradictory video by saying the D7100 is the best current production camera, and then a couple of videos later I stated that the D700 is not Nikon's best DSLR. So I have quantified and qualified the premise for both of those videos and the statements in differentiating the two out. The caveats, the qualifications, and the quantifications have now been established, and I hopefully have cleared that up because no contradiction was either implied or meant, and I still stand by those previous videos, but maybe I did not make a very specific, because specificity is divinity, I did not make a specific enough declaration in differentiating out A from B and B from A. But now, hopefully I have. Send me any questions, you like this video, send me a buck or two, you can go tell me to screw myself, tell me where to stick it, Tell me what side of the, what, what cliff to jump off of, whatever makes you happy, whatever toots your horn and paddles your boat. Let me know what you like, don't like, what you make video of. Just don't send me any unusual requests that are just like too strange or bizarre because sometimes the requests are a little freaky. You know, like, uh, like freaky freaky. So. <laughs> This is another crazy video from the angry photographer, alright? I don't have a fro, my head is bald. Bald. There's no gigantic um, Jewish afro on the top. No, I'm not an anti-Semite for Christ's sakes, don't accuse me of that. I don't have a gigantic Jewish fro on the top of my head. I'm not basing my persona non grata off a gigantic Jewish afro on the top of my head. As uh, someone else on YouTube does, my head is bald. And you know what the monks called uh, hair? They called it ignorance grass. And if we take the Chinese monks at what they said and calling hair on the top of your head ignorance grass, isn't that lovely? Ignorance grass. Then what can we do? Re deduce from the other persona non grata to which I refer? I'm making a gleeful little jab at him, whatever the fuck, meant to be funny. I hope I cleared things up. Um, yeah, I've had too much caffeine. Oh well, screw it, whatever. Catch you later. Thanks, bye.